Welcome back to my series, Ask a Derm Instead of Googling, where I grab comments from my videos and answer your burning questions. We've gone over a lot of topics in the previous videos, like supplements that can make acne worse, hormonal breakouts, UV light, what's it all about, sunscreen oil, and today we're gonna be tackling stretch marks, post-pregnancy, textured skin, flare-ups with tretinoin, and freckles. I'm Dr. Ramina. I'm a triple board certified dermatologist. I've been in private practice for over 10 years. I have a special interest in skincare, acne, hair loss, a lot of dermatological topics and love answering your questions. And I am especially excited about these ones. So let's get into it. I see you have some freckles. Did you notice any fading of your freckles when taking retinol? Asking because I don't want my freckles to fade if I start using retinol. Okay, so the hallmark feature of freckles is that they come out more with sun and they can go away with sun protection. Sometimes freckles will still hang around even with sun protection. I've had freckles most of my life. They do come out more if I'm not protecting my skin. They definitely come out more when I was pregnant. You know, when you're pregnant, you can get more hyperpigmentation in general. In terms of things that can get rid of freckles, retinol, tretinoin, like prescription retinoids can help do that. Fading creams, like things with hydroquinone can also help fade freckles. And then there's procedures, of course, like chemical peels, and there's a variety of lasers that can help get rid of freckles. I feel like at baseline, I have freckles even during the winter, but I just never cared enough to get rid of them. I've had them for my whole life. I don't know what your freckles look like, but a lot of people can still keep many of their freckles even with sunscreen and with using a retinol. I would say using hydroquinone and and doing things like chemical peels or lasers are going to be what gets rid of freckles more than you would see with retinol and sunscreen. If you're interested in anti-aging, I would recommend using a retinol. You may lose some of your freckles, but I still think the benefits of retinol outweigh having some freckles. What are some tips to manage the flare-up of skin peeling after using tretinoin? Tretinoin has to be used very gradually, especially if you are new to it, because if you use too much too quickly, you're going to certainly get what's called like a retinoid dermatitis and you can get skin peeling, flaking, drying, not in everyone, but definitely can happen in many people if you use too much of it. So if you're new to retinoids, I definitely tell people to start low and slow. So what I mean by that is start with a lower strength and just use a little bit very slowly. And I tell people, like a chocolate chip or a green pea size for the whole face. You can like dab it, say dab it in five places and then rub it in. So let's say you use it two nights a week for two weeks without any issues, then try to go every other night. And if after a month you are good, you could potentially go every night. Let's say you're using it for two weeks two nights a week and you're still having issues, what you can do is a retinoid sandwich where you put a layer of moisturizer on first, then the tretinoin, and then you can do another moisturizer on top of that. And some people might think that that could affect the effectiveness of the tretinoin, but actually there was a study done to show that doing a moisturizer before tretinoin did not have different effects compared to putting moisturizer only after tretinoin. So doing that moisturizer sandwich is definitely a really helpful technique. And if that still doesn't work, there's also something called like short contact therapy where where, like when you come home from work or from school or whatever just that afternoon till the evening you could put on your tretinoin it'll be on your skin for a few hours and then you can wash it off before you go to bed and do the rest of your nighttime routine and you can do that consistently the other option too is that you know if it's just too much to deal with you can always use like an over-the-counter retinoid those are considered to be more gentle whether they're retinol or retinals and then there's also adapalene which used to be a prescription well adapalene 0.3% is still prescription but adapalene 0.1% is available over the counter that's another one to try now let's say you do have the peeling and or irritation what you want to do is stop the retinoid right away don't use anything for a week and just keep with gentle cleansers, gentle moisturizers. I recommend using kind of more thick barrier creams to really help repair that skin. It's irritated, the barrier's compromised and really take it easy for that week. So after using like the gentle products for a week to heal your skin, you can start again, but taking more of those precautionary measures and just be careful. Are there any definitive treatments for stretch marks post-pregnancy? Thank you. Okay, so this is in response to the video I did on how to treat stretch marks during pregnancy. Well, first I wanna say that there are no like definitive ways to permanently get rid of stretch marks for good. There are things that can definitely help decrease the appearance of stretch marks, but stretch marks can be really tough and it also depends on how bad the stretch marks are and how old they are. But if you're not pregnant, there are definitely way more options and there are more effective options. So when it comes to topical products, you can use retinoid creams like Tretinoin, Retin-A. There's over-the-counter retinol. I would say try to use a prescription version. Those can help 
with some collagen remodeling, it doesn't get rid of stretch marks completely, but there is some data to support that it can help decrease the appearance. I mentioned other kind of pregnancy safe products like hyaluronic acid. And then there's other things that build collagen, like I said, like vitamin C peptides. Now, when you're not pregnant, you can also do procedures too. So procedures that have been shown to be helpful, not definitive, but helpful are things like microneedling. And then there's also lasers. Uh, we have the Fraxel laser in our office. You could do more intense like CO2 laser, but yeah, nothing is definitive, but you do have better options not as a pregnant person. Doctor, I'm begging you to tell me what to do for textured skin. I have no pimples, but my skin feels so heavy and bumpy and harsh. That sounds pretty intense, heavy, bumpy, and harsh. Okay, so when I think of textured skin, I think of like skin with enlarged pores, clogged pores, with just like fine, like bumpy texture to it. And it could be from a variety of different things. Sometimes people can have textured skin because their skin's irritated from something, but we'll kind of answer this in the context of textured skin from having kind of like buildup of dead skin, kind of more pronounced pores. So when it comes to like smoothing out textured skin, you want to help get rid of that buildup of dead skin cells. And one of the best ways to do that is through exfoliating products. I prefer, you know, chemical exfoliating acids as opposed to like physical like scrubs, physical harsh products. Our skin cell turnover is typically supposed to be every 30 days, but as we get older, our skin cells get more lazy and the skin cell turnover is more sluggish. There's more buildup of dead skin cells. So sometimes we just need that extra help from like exfoliating products. I also think incorporating a retinoid into your regimen is important. Sometimes it could take a while for your skin to adjust to it for it to kind of regulate your skin cell cycle, but that's also important for increasing skin cell turnover. And if you need extra help, there is always chemical peels. There's also lasers. So in terms of chemical exfoliating acids, I am a fan of the AHE family, the alpha hydroxy acids, things like glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, and starting with like a gentle strength and you know, eventually you could potentially work your way up, but doing that one time a week, three times a week, it depends on the acid and the strength of the acid. And then with a retinoid, you can always start with an over-the-counter retinol, start gradually, work your way up from every other night to every night. I don't recommend using a retinoid the same night as your exfoliating acid, especially in the beginning. Now for some gentle exfoliating acids, you can potentially use them the same time as a retinoid, but it also depends on your skin type. So it's it's hard to really give like specific guidance without knowing like what specific acid you're using and like what your skin type is. Okay, so those would be the two products I would use if you have textured skin, chemical exfoliating acids and retinoids, especially if your skin is harsh, bumpy, and heavy. Okay, so I know there was a lot of heavy information in those answers, but the great thing is you can always watch this again and take notes. If you like this series and you wanna get your questions answered, go ahead and comment your questions below and I will add them to my list. As always, thank you so much for being part of this community. I hope that these videos help you. Be sure to subscribe to keep up with the series and other videos that I have coming out.